Hey, hello everyone. Victor Momo from Excel Moments with a continuation of the solution series to Excel BI's LinkedIn challenges. Like I've said in previous videos, if you are not following the Excel BI LinkedIn page, you should if you want to boost your Excel formula team. This is challenge 221. What are we doing here? We're basically trying to count the number of consecutive ones. You see what that means. Okay, so look at this. You have some strings which are a blend of zeros and ones. And it says count the number of ones if they are consecutive. Consecutive, they definitely have to happen on a call more than once. Okay? So if it happens one time, you know, that's not consecutive. So look at this. You have a zero here. You have a one. The one doesn't have any other one following it directly. So this is in the consecutive one. When you come in here, you have ones three times. One, two, three. Okay? So that's the three that you have here. You have a break because there's a zero. You have one and one. That's the two here. So three comma two, just to say that, yes, we have two sets of consecutive numbers. The first time you occurs three times, the next time you occurs twice. Let's look at this one, which I think is, well, maybe a relatively complex one. It starts with zero. You have two ones. So that's the two you have here. We have a break with a zero again. We have two ones. That's the two you have here. You have a break with a zero and you have four ones. So two, two, four. That's what you have. So that's the problem. I hope that's easy enough for us to understand. So now let's think about the solution. Okay. So how do you approach this? Basically, you need to do something that would help you keep the consecutive ones together and separate at the same time. So what do I mean together? These two ones should go together, but they should be separate from these two ones. And they should be separate from these four ones. So, you know, the consecutive numbers should be together or separate from any other set of consecutive numbers, basically. So if you look at this, you probably can see that zero is really what breaks the chain, right? So when you have zero and then you have ones, you have a zero. And then you have ones again. So zero is always in between. So if you kind of do a split using zero, then you may be able to get something to work. I did solve it in more than one way, you know, but most of them still had a text split and a substitute. The order in which you do it, you know, wouldn't really change much, except, you know, if you are just finicky about, um, you know, having a very short formula, then you insist on a certain approach. But the way I approach these problems is, I started up because I can see the formula spill to the grid. Then based on what I see, that drives, you know, my next step. So I'm going to use this one, this particular line, which I feel is, you know, maybe one of the most complex ones. Okay. And then once I get it to work, I would extend it to the others. So because I can see that zero pretty much would be a good delimiter, I can use a text split, you know, and I'll use zero as my delimiter. So here. And then I split based on zero, zero in double quotes, change much. Okay, so you can see that right now we have the consecutive numbers, you know, separated from themselves. Okay, that's like every set of consecutive numbers are separated, which is good. The other thing I see here is that we have a comma space. So that's the delimiter. I may want to do a substitute and say, you know, for the comma space, I want you to replace it with nothing. Okay, so what I see drives my next step. That's how. I approach it. So I go to the end. I put a comma space as my old text, like what to find. And I say replace it with nothing, basically. Right? So you see that we're already in a good place. So we have the ones together, you know, the ones that are consecutive and they are also separate from each other. So now what we are interested in really is the number of times they occur. And if you look at this properly, you see that the number of times they occur is basically just the length, you know, of each of those cells because the length here is four, the length here is two, the length here is two. So that's it. So we are going to just use, you know, the length function. Length function would give us at least the answers, you know, will be at least close to where we are headed. Oops, sorry. Okay. So here, so we do length and then close. Right, good. Okay. So we would then need to bring all this together using maybe a text journal or an array to text. The only problem here is that if, you know, the number of times your cause is either zero or one, you don't want to add this into your string. Okay. So you can see that if you take this up to some of the other cells there, you see some where you have zeros and one. Like this one, for example, there isn't any consecutive one. 
right? It's either zero, you know, or one. So basically, none is consecutive. So you're not even going to get a result for this. But you just need to know. So in doing your text join or bringing them together, you must find a way to exclude the zero. But first of all, let's at least do like a regular text join and see what we get. I know that I will use this variable one, more than one time. So I probably will want to make, you know, it's a variable using maybe a let. So I'll say let A be this. Okay. Right. Now let me do, you know, just a regular text join. So I'm going to say text join my delimiter here from what I see from the results like a comma space. And this next argument is very important. You know, ignore empty cells. So I'm going to use this as a true. So I'm going to use one in there. And then for the text to pretty much glue together, I just use A, which a represents these numbers you are seeing. So you see the result anyway. Okay. So you can see that. So it just brings everything together. The only thing that we need to adjust here is the zero bit. So what you need to do is that you can't just use A here. You need to find a way, you know, to delineate or separate, you know, A's that are zeros and ones from the other. So basically you use an if function. And just say if A is greater than one, that's when you need A. If not, you want it to be blank. The good thing about this blank here is that the second argument of the text join ignores, you know, blank or empty, basically. So by setting every other thing that is not zero, that is not greater than one, rather, like zero and one to empty, you know, by the time you use this text join, it's just going to ignore it, okay? So we're just going to put one more bracket, I think. Right, and you see that that's fixed. So now we have two to four. And I can then extend this to the others and I see the formula, I extend it upwards and I also get that. The only problem with this, for those of you who have been following my video, it's not really a problem, but it's just that, yeah, I mean, why have dynamic arrays and still have to drag formulas downwards, right? So what I want to do now is extend this, you know, as in start in one cell pretty much and then, you know, have it spill to the other cells. Okay, so I will use the first one. This is good enough for me, and I'm just going to use a map function. And the map function basically is saying this is a transformation, right? Because it starts off with this string, and with all that mumbo jumbo you saw in the formula bar, it gets transformed, you know, to two. So what you're just saying with the map function is that take the next string two, do all that mumbo jumbo, return its own value here. Take the next string, do all that mumbo jumbo, and return, you know, it here. Because this transformation, which is the formula you've written, is going to be applied, you know, to all of them. It's basically the same formula. The difference is that A2 here should change to A3 for the next, A4, and so on. So the map is useful in that regard. You can even use the by row in this instance, but we use the map. So we take map, and we give it all the elements of the array, which basically is everything here. We need a variable which is going to serve as, you know, like an iterator. So every step, that variable is going to take one of the elements. So when it starts, X is going to take the value in A2, which is this string. It will perform the transformation on it. It would then, you know, return a result, which it keeps as the first element of, you know, the new array, right? Then X then goes to the next cell, which is going to be A3. It performs this transformation on it and it keeps the result as a second element of the new array. And that's how it keeps going till it's done. So basically, you don't need this A2 anymore. A2 here will be represented by X because X is now what goes from row to row. Okay? So we we'll need two brackets. One to close the lambda and then one to close the map. And that should be all. Right? So now you have it. It's working, you know, fine. And it spills. That's the interesting part for me. So it's in one cell and it spills to the other cells. And that's a very good thing. So that's basically how it works. I remember seeing, I think it must have been Bo Rydobon. Yeah, the guy comes up with, you know, very, very impressive constructs. You just can't beat it. I think he did something interesting here. Instead of using uh, the if construct, he used like a repeat function if i remember i did okay repeat so now he's going to repeat so my variable here is a okay so it's going to repeat a well in one of two ways if a is greater than one okay so what does this do basically right if it's greater than one so that's going to be true 
right? So it's going to repeat it one time. <laughs> Basically, if it's not greater than one, then it does it even feature. That's what he used in place of the if. It's very interesting. So that's a red bracket. So basically, you know, okay, I need that. I need the let, and then I need the map. Let's see if this works too. Okay, so pretty much does the same thing. But it was just something interesting I saw, and, you know, I decided, you know, to just share that. So credit goes to Bo right upon four. That's amazing construct. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel Excel Moments. For now, I'm out.